Eyewitness News, the Chicago area's number one news, with Floyd Calvert, Kathy Brock, Jerry Taft, and Jim Rose. Good evening, everyone. I'm Kathy Brock. And I'm Joel Daly. Floyd Calvert is still away. In our news tonight, a brand new development and a Chicago connection in the O.J. Simpson case. As Channel 7 first reported, Chicago police tonight are examining clothing discovered near the former O'Hare Plaza Hotel. Simpson stayed there for a short time in the hours after the double murder in Los Angeles. Among the items found, a pair of black sweatpants and an Army field jacket. Do the items have anything to do with the O.J. Simpson case? Channel 7's investigative reporter Chuck Gowdy tells us that officials are taking this discover very seriously. Chuck broke the story and he has more from the newsroom tonight. Chuck? Kathy, he's a suburban Schiller Park apartment resident. Now he's a bit player in the legal production called The People vs. O.J. Simpson. William Griffin of Schiller Park was taking a regular jog through the forest preserve near his apartment when he saw something that he filed away in his memory, only to be recalled when he heard some familiar testimony in the Simpson trial. And tonight, what William Griffin saw and heard has attracted even the attention of the Los Angeles police chief. We acknowledge that something exists, these clothing exists, uh, they were found uh, out of state in Chicago, and we're going to find out what, what it means right now. Los Angeles police tonight awaiting the clothing found in this forest preserve near O'Hare Airport, a half mile due west of the O'Hare Plaza Hotel, where O.J. Simpson stayed the morning after the murder. Police sources say a jogger in the Chicago preserve had spotted the ball of clothing along a fence-lined trail, but thought nothing of it, until listening to yesterday's testimony of Simpson house guest Cato Kalin. At the best American election, I thought it was a sweat outfit. Okay, what color was it? Dark color. Could you tell? It was either blue or dark blue or, or black. After hearing Mr. Kalin, the jogger called L.A. police, who asked Chicago detectives to accompany him to the trail, where they found a camouflage army jacket and a pair of black sweatpants. Both items taken to the Chicago Police Crime Lab will be forwarded to the LAPD. The discovery comes nine months after a sweeping search of a different wooded area just south of the hotel. That search turned up no clothing and no murder weapon. Just after the summer search, Channel 7 News has learned that a tow truck driver found this serrated steak knife 100 yards north of the hotel. The knife was here on the Cumberland entrance ramp to the Kennedy Expressway. The tow driver, helping another motorist at the time, says he joked about the knife as possibly being OJ's and tossed it to the shoulder. When he heard trial testimony about the weapon in January, he retrieved the knife, called Channel 7 News, and asked that we turn it over to the Chicago police, which we did. Chicago evidence technicians shipped the knife to Los Angeles police six weeks ago, and it has been analyzed for blood and fingerprints. L.A. detectives will not reveal the results of those tests, but investigators in Southern California say autopsy results on the murder victims showed that a smooth-edged knife was used and not a serrated knife like the one the truck driver found. It is very likely that the test results on the clothing will show that neither article is related to the O.J. Simpson case. That is late word from Chicago police tonight, but it's only a guess. There hasn't been any testing done. And Joel and Kathy, uh, they say that the clothing looks as though it was not out there for nine months, which is the period of time since the murder. All right, Chuck, thanks very much. And now the latest in today's testimony in the Simpson trial. Brian Cato Kalin was on the witness stand again all day court has now finished for the day in Los Angeles with the defense wrapping up its cross-examination. Here then the latest. Judge Ito tells the jury they will take tomorrow off so he can work on other cases. Testimony in the Simpson case resumes Monday morning with Cato Kalin back on the stand. Late this afternoon, Kalin again testified under re redirect by the prosecutors that O.J. did not want him to move in with Nicole Brown Simpson saying it wasn't right. And Kalen also said he saw two arguments involving Nicole and O.J. Simpson. He says there was some yelling, but no physical violence. Stay with Channel 7 for the latest on the Simpson trial. Kathy? No verdict to report yet in the trial of accused murderer Helmut Hofer, but this afternoon the jury in the case did send a note to the judge. Hofer is on trial for the 1993 murder of Suzanne Olds of Wilmette. The note from the jury foreman indicated that a male juror is refusing to abide by the law as it applies to the Hofer case. The judge simply responded by reminding jurors that they are sworn to follow the law and ask them to continue their deliberations. This is the fourth day of deliberations in Skokie. Kathy, in just a little more than 24 hours from now, Chicago will be buzzing. Electricity will fill the United Center for 
what else but Michael's homecoming. Today, Michael Jordan stepped inside the new stadium for the first time as a player, but he was long gone by the time our cameras were permitted in. We're told his errand is practice for about an hour and a half, but Michael couldn't escape the United Center without a swarm of cameras and reporters following him. Channel 7's Andy Neville now has more on Michael Mania. Andy? We sure do here. You know, Michael Mania is more than just about basketball. As everybody knows, it's pretty much about sensational marketing. You've got T-shirts, I'm back, and jerseys, pretty much anything you want with Michael Jordan's name on it, you can get. But besides the souvenirs, there's also a good deal of merchandise for the serious sports enthusiasts, like basketballs, for instance. And just like these souvenirs, the manufacturers are working feverishly to get this stuff into the stores, the stuff that Air Jordan is made of. Since the Michael Jordan rumor mill began a few weeks ago, manufacturers have been going crazy to fill the needs of hungry fans. Chicago-based Wilson Sporting Goods was not to be left out. They started designing new Jordan logos for their basketballs so that when the announcement came, they would be ready. Immediately, as quickly yes. as you can. Uh, the conversations we've had with our key retailers is, you know, how soon can I have it? And there really hasn't been a question of what, you know, the product or the pricing at this point. Doesn't matter what it is or how much it costs, just get it to yes. the store. Wilson's been making Michael Jordan products since Michael got out of college. In fact, they've sold over 10 million balls with Michael's name on it. In the last four to five years, that's meant about $50 million in business to the company. With the profits that high, the Wilson design team wasn't going to miss the boat on all the new Jordan excitement. They came up with three basketball graphics to meet what they expected would be an immediate demand. On Monday night, after the Sunday game, we had to change all the numbers from 23 to 45 because we had, we had speculated that Mike was coming back, but uh, we didn't know what number it was going to be. So we started designing things last week with 23s on them. And so um, thank you, Mike, for <laughs> we're redesigning it. Mark Desjardins designed about 99% of all the basketballs with Jordan's name on it. In a lot of ways, it's kind of like getting to know an old friend again, really, you know. But it's, it's a lot of fun. Michael makes it a lot of fun. And uh, it's just the hype around him. and it's, it, it's been very, very exciting. Wilson says those first three designs should be in the stores by mid-April. Andy Neville reporting live from Sport Mart, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Joel? Have a ball. Thanks, Andy. <laughs> More on the Jordan homecoming story coming up in sports. And a reminder... But tomorrow night, we'll have a special one-hour edition of Eyewitness News at 10 with expanded coverage of Michael Jordan's return to the hard court here in the city of Chicago. Stay with Channel 7 for complete coverage of Michael Jordan's homecoming. Illinois eye doctors tonight charging Senate President Pate Phillip with improperly influencing a bill. Now, the issue involves Phillip's wife, Nancy, who became a trustee of the Illinois College of Optometry a year ago. Optometrists are not physicians, but over the objections of eye doctors or ophthalmologists, the Senate passed a bill allowing optometrists to treat minor eye irritations. Phil denied that his wife's position has anything to do with the bill's passage. In a statement, he says, quote, I did not exert any influence over the bill. There is no tie between my wife's position on the board and the bill. Forty-one other states have similar legislation, and the bill could lead to lower costs for patients and better services, end quote. It is becoming one of the most hotly debated issues facing suburbanites in the upcoming election. Arlington International Racecourse officials are working hard to convince voters to approve casino gambling at the track. On April 4th, voters in northwest suburban Arlington Heights are going to be asked if casino gambling should be permitted there. Channel 7's Andy Shaw looks at both sides. The opponents of riverboat gambling at Arlington International Racecourse are laughing this evening because the only, quote, navigable waterway out here is the mighty Salt Creek, meandering through the racetrack grounds 10 feet wide and 2 feet deep, conjuring up visions of another Panama Canal project to make it big enough for a giant riverboat unless the state changes its casino laws. We thought they were just joking about it until we found out there was a dredging permit and the Army Corps said, sure, it can be considered navigable. You'd have to do a heck of a lot of dredging uh, to, to get something in there. And I can just imagine what the people downstream would be thinking about that. Track officials say it's an option if the casino referendum passes and state lawmakers give them a license. 
And look what happened over at, at Fox River. They took a, a, a river that was three inches deep, and they dredged it to nine feet, and they've now got a boat in there that's 100 feet longer than the river is wide, and somehow that's navigable, and they're cruising there. The racetrack is spending $150,000 trying to get this referendum approved. That includes a lavish cocktail party buffet last night for 300 local election judges and precinct captains, and a new study by a former FBI agent claiming a riverboat casino will not appreciably increase crime here in Arlington Heights. If you were to place a shopping center uh, on a piece of property rather than a, uh, uh, a casino operation, you're going to find essentially the same kind of crime conditions. He put down what they asked for because that's what he was paid for. The other big issue, of course, economic. Track owner Dick Duchessois threatening to cancel horse racing after this season if he doesn't get a casino license. That would be a major blow to the village of Arlington Heights, and a casino would be an economic bonanza in terms of tax dollars and jobs. But is Arlington Heights really just another struggling river town, ready to turn a stream into a major waterway? Well, the voters have their say on April 4th. Reporting live in the newsroom, I'm Andy Shaw, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Joel and Kathy, back to you. It'll be interesting to see if they can get a boat on that stream. Not yet. Thanks, Andy. Next on Eyewitness News at 6, smart kids and accusations of cheating. Tonight, a bombshell decision for Steinmetz High School. In dollar signs, an accident after an employee works a lengthy shift at McDonald's. Now, McDonald's is ordered to pay damages. Also, why the price you pay for produce is on the rise. We'll be right back. This elderly couple lost all their worldly possessions in a fire. When they came in to see us, they just wanted some money so they could go to the SPCA and pick up their cat, Gus. That was the most important thing to them, that Gus was okay. I'm a very emotional person, so... It was very hard for me not to cry with them. I, I just let them talk and reassured them things are going to be okay. Raise your hand if you need any help. Where will you be when your laxative starts working? Where? Fleet brand glycerin suppositories works fast in just minutes. For fast, predictable relief, trust Fleet. It's fast and predictable. Right now, the reasons for leasing a 95 DeVille are really piling up. It's Cadillac's new luxury smart lease, only $4.89 a month for 30 months. And save even more money with free smart care basic maintenance. Free oil changes, oil filters, and more for your 30-month lease. But hurry, offers this great will get swept up fast. The luxury smart lease and free basic smart care maintenance. Now at your Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana Cadillac dealers. Absolutely are most important. America's biggest, the world's most renowned carpet savings event, New York Carpet World's Lifestyles 95 Expo and Sale. Bigger, better, because every sale carpet's half price. Huge selection, hundreds, half price. Lifestyles 95, our best bonus savings. Adding free, labor on sale. Lifestyles 95, credit free with no payments till October. The sale event of the year. Lifestyles 95 at New York Carpet World through Saturday. Carson's two-day sale this Saturday and Sunday. So head to Carson's before it's too late. Watch Pat and Vanna on Wheel of Fortune, weeknights at 6.30. There is a decision tonight in the fight over the Academic Decathlon Championship of Illinois. The Illinois Decathlon Association has stripped Steinmetz High School in Chicago of the championship title. The nine-member team scored extraordinarily high on the tough test taking top honors away from Whitney Young Magnet School, which has been champion for the past nine years. Whitney Young filed a protest earlier this week. Steinmetz was ordered to take a validation exam by the Decathlon Association, but the team refused, saying the reason they scored so high is because they worked so hard. It's as if people are, like, questioning our morals, and I think that is very wrong because my parents taught me morals, and I would never change. The team's pro bono attorney says he will fight in court for the team's title. He adds that it's disappointing that Steinmetz students will be forced to go to court rather than going to school. In dollar signs tonight, Oak Brook-based McDonald's is vowing to fight an Oregon appeals court ruling. The court says McDonald's is liable for damages in a car crash caused by an employee working unusually long hours. 
Court's ruling upholds a $375,000 jury damage award to Frederick Faberty. He was injured when a car driven by a McDonald's employee, Matt Theurer, hit his vehicle when it crossed a highway center line near Portland, Oregon. Theurer was killed in the April 1988 accident. California's loss is Texas gain, at least at the vegetable market. Growers in the Lone Star State say prices for the vegetables they grow are on the rise. That's because of the losses suffered in the California floods. They note that the biggest hikes are for broccoli, carrots, cauliflower, celery, and lettuce. The crops hit hardest on the West Coast. On Wall Street today, the Dow Jones Industrial Average was up almost five points to close today, 4,087, volume totaling 320 million shares. Chilly spring-like weather, Mike Kaplan's weather forecast is coming up next. And later on in sports, Michael Jordan's big Chicago homecoming. MJ didn't have much to say today, but Jim Rose has, Rose has a few insights in tomorrow night's game with Shaq and the Magic. When those who ruled began destroying a nation, only one man was willing to lead the fight, Robert Roy McGregor. You're Dan McGregor. I will have justice. United Artists Pictures invites you to experience the legend of Rob Roy. Made it all. Starts Friday, April 7th in Select Cities. April 12th everywhere. There's a fresh new the freshest values are waiting for you at Jewel. Get a sneak peek at summer's best with fresh strawberries, just 79 cents a pint. Enjoy grade A freshness with our whole frying chickens, only 49 cents a pound. Save on cooked smoked ham shank portion, just 79 cents a pound. And don't miss Jewel's buy one, get one free sale. Double up on favorites like these and more for the freshest values. Homemakers, the great Chicago furniture store just got even bigger. Next Saturday, March 25th, we're opening a brand new showroom right here in Morton Grove at Dempster and Waukegan Road. So, come on, we're throwing a furniture party. A terrific grand opening sale in every department at all six locations. And there are no payments due till July. A great new store in Morton Grove opens this Saturday at Dempster and Waukegan Road. John Smith's your local Nissan dealers are on a record-breaking pace, and they've been challenged to move their entire inventory of award-winning Nissans by April 3rd. Lease an Ultimate GXE for just $1.99 a month for 36 months with $19.99 down. Get 1.9 financing on all Ultimates and Quests. Plus, choose financing with zero down and no payments for 90 days on all of the award-winning Nissans. Lease the all-new Maxima for just $2.99 a month for 36 months with $1,500 down. The challenge is on now through April 3rd at your nearest Nissan dealer. Well, Mr. Kaplan, what do you have to say for yourself today? Well, we had some wild stuff last night and this morning. It's wild, and you're not the wild kind of guy. I, I like at my house this morning. Mine, too, yes. In addition to the uh, regular bowl of breakfast flakes at the uh, Brock and Kaplan Ranch, we had the chunky chunks of brand food and light snow coming down this morning. This is spring. We're supposed to be putting this stuff behind us, but I uh, think we may have one more round of snow here in the five-day forecast. Talk more about that in a moment. Overnight rainfall was kind of meager, a quarter inch or so at Park Forest, lesser amounts at Aurora, Wheat and O'Hare officially chimed in with three hundredths of an inch. Cold day, 41. That's it for the high. This morning's low was 36 degrees. That's below normal. 37 degrees right now. Winds really adding an extra nip to the air. Northeast at 14. Barometer 30.03 and on the way up. Along the lakefront, it's 36. Midway temperature now 37 degrees. In Harvey, it is 38. Same temperature at Evanston, Glen Ellen at 39. New Lenox, 38 degrees. Skies at least have been gray all day. Are going to be clearing up later on tonight. Drier air coming in from the north. And uh, while that's nice, we'll be able to see some stars. It's also going to allow temperatures to crash tonight into the 20s. Right now, the warm air heads south. 87 in Dallas, San Antonio, 90. It's warmer than it is out in the deserts of California and Arizona, where California continues to get pummeled with rain and snow. Look at the radar picture out here. Thunderstorm going on in San Francisco right now, but get up into the hills outside of a Lake Tahoe. Eight feet of snow there since Monday. Great for skiers if you can get to the slopes. Tomorrow's weather map, here comes this storm. We'll be moving into the Plain State. Showers and thunderstorms breaking out ahead of it. Those will be affecting us Saturday night and Sunday. And in the cold air behind this, we may have to deal with a couple of flakes of wet snow here on Monday. 
Here's a forecast. Clouds will be, yeah, doesn't that put a smile on your face? Clouds will break this evening. Chilly temperatures in the 30s with wind chills in the teens. 28 for the low tonight with mainly clear skies. Bright day tomorrow. Lots of sunshine, a high of 51, but it will be much cooler along the lakefront. Chilly again tomorrow night. Partly cloudy with a low of 30. We'll hit 55 Saturday. Nighttime showers. Sunday looks wet with 52. Rain and wet snow here Monday, and then just plain old cold on Tuesday with a high of 42 degrees. No accumulation of snow, but uh, winter just doesn't want to give up. Lovely Can't put spring it to rest. weather. Sorry. We're still lucky. Thanks, Mark. Okay. Diane Burns standing by in the newsroom tonight with a look at what's ahead on Channel 7 News at 10. Kathy Joel coming up tonight at 10. A happy ending for two area twins conjoined at birth. How Megan and Shannon Fanning and their parents beat the odds. Then we're with Chicago's Archbishop in the Holy Land. I'm Alan Krzyzewski in Jerusalem where Joseph Cardinal Bernadine is giving a major speech on anti-Semitism tonight. Complete coverage of Cardinal Bernadine's pilgrimage and his visit to the Holocaust Memorial. Join John Jury and me for Channel 7 News coming up tonight at 10. Joel, Kathy? Thank you, Diane. Sports is up next. This is where the nation was first introduced to Michael Jordan, and for the first time since 1982, Georgetown and North Carolina will have an NCAA reunion. Jim Rose says that in all the sports just ahead. 99. It's the payment at your neighborhood Mitsubishi dealer for a 95 Galant or Eclipse. 199. 199 a month or buy with zero down and 2.9% financing. 199. 199 a month. 30 months for America's favorite family sedan Galant S or the 40 Eclipse RS. 199. Or buy with zero down and 2.9% financing. 199. Galant S or Eclipse RS built right here in Illinois only at your nearby neighborhood Mitsubishi dealer. Yes, we can match any color. No problem. Customers don't want to stand around and wait. They can't get the project done waiting. Yes, we can match this color. This is your Brussels sprout green. The faster I can finish here, the sooner he can get out. If they want that color, we do our best to get it. Bowling ball blue. And here's your ball. Add new color to any room in the house or freshen an existing look with spread satin interior paint from Glidden. It's one of their most durable and scrubbable wall paints. And it's available at a guaranteed low price every day at the Home Depot. If you've ever been there, uh, I mean, after, you are so impressed by how people can survive in just about anything. People are fighters. You know, they want to get back up. They want to get back to business. We're not some big, ominous insurance company. We're people just like they are. And we're there when they need us. While some people plod through the daily routine, there's something about driving a Jeep Grand Cherokee with a standard driver's airbag, four-wheel anti-lock brakes, and a 220-horsepower V8 that can turn an ordinary day into an extraordinary day. Now get terrific option package values on Jeep Grand Cherokee. See your local Jeep and Eagle dealer. Jim Rose, back from Boston. Let me guess what we're talking about Boston. tonight. Basketball, my favorite sport. You know, <laughs> I like the way they dribble up and down the court. I keep going on and on, but they want to find out about Michael Jordan, who made a triumphant return to the Boston Garden last night, perhaps taking a page from the book of Deion Sanders. Jordan said he was glad to play well in a place that has been so kind to him, the Boston Garden. Said it felt like home. Once again today, as Michael left practice, he was surrounded by the media. This was the first chance to shoot some baskets at the United Center, but they wouldn't let us take pictures of it. The subject came up about his home debut against the Shaq Man, Grant, and the Orlando Magic tomorrow night, a home Michael has never played in before. I don't know. I don't remember how it used to be. But as long as you go in the hole, it doesn't matter. You comfortable in there, Michael? How did, how did it feel? Well, I'm not comfortable. It's still new to me right now. I, I wish he would have came back our game and then been a little rusty, but now uh, with him having two games in advance, it's going to be harder. Michael is a great player, a great person. Like I said, I'm, I'm just going to be honored to be on the same court with him. The monotone of the Shaq man. Don't forget tomorrow night after the game, Channel 7 Eyewitness News will have an expanded hour newscast beginning at 10 to bring you all the highlights and all the post-game live from the United Center. Last night when Michael hit his first three shots, including this three-pointer, you could just sense that he and his teammates were relaxed. Celtics were never in this one, and Michael got everybody involved. Bulls won going away, 124-107. Look where he puts it on the floor like that one-handed. Half-time, the Celtics' former captain, Reggie Lewis, had his number... 
35, retired, even as rumors persist that Lewis used cocaine during his career. Former teammates continue to back Lewis, who died in 1993 of a heart attack. I was sitting down when Donald was talking, what he would say uh, to the crowd, how he would react, uh, give that little smile and stuff. So, you know, it was great. I was very happy for, for the ceremony, but it was very sad because he's not here to enjoy it. Bulls owner Jerry Reinsdorf was in town today accepting an award from the United States Air Force. Now that Michael is back in the fold, does it change the Bulls' philosophy of how they want to structure the team to play around him? Uh, certainly, with, with Michael gone, I think, you know, our philosophy, philosophy was going to be to, to get younger. Uh, now, if you figure that Michael will play maybe three or four more years, instead of getting younger, you try to fill the holes that you have as fast as you can, probably with, with, with veterans. And the hole is a power forward, by the way. Week two of the NCAA tournament gets underway tonight with a number of key matchups around the country. And you know Michael Jordan will have some fond memories when his North Carolina Tar Heels take on the Georgetown Hoyers. March 1982, Michael hits the shot for North Carolina to beat Georgetown and the NCAA championship, and now they will all meet again. And of course, the number one Arkansas fan is hoping of a repeat championship for his beloved Razorbacks. Considering they have barely survived getting to the round of 16, the president suspects that maybe they have gotten some help from above. After the last two games, there's some divine providence that keeps us going, so <laughs> I'm more hopeful now than I was when they started the tournament. Finally, gusting winds of up to 35 miles an hour are playing the happy with the golfers at the tournament. Players' championships, Seve Ballesteros found out at the infamous 17th Island Hole. But some players managed. Here's the shot of the day. Ernie Ells' approach on 14 that sets up an easy birdie. Corey Pavin is your leader in the clubhouse at six strokes under par. Somehow it's always easier playing that game at TPC on the Sega Genesis system. That's for <laughs> <laughs> One final thing. Can you get tickets for tomorrow night? No. There are no press tickets. I have a no, 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 not you. Oh, you can Anybody. get them. Can you get tickets? Oh, you can get them if you have about a thousand bucks. Wow. Yeah. Scalpers are going to. That's for. right. Mm -hmm. So you have to have a lot of money to Lots get Lots of cash. Okay. Well, we'll watch it on television. Mm -hmm. That's you. it for Channel 7 News at 6. I'm Joel Daly. I'm Kathy Brock. For Jim Rose and Mike Kaplan, have a great night, everybody. Good night.